like when I was younger, if if it was just more publicized, like how heavy Jordan was in the game, right. if it was if it was just more talked about, if there were more accommodations being made to yeah. make golf feel more like that, I would have been proud. Like I would have right. been like, yo, MJ golfing and hooping, dog. Like why don't, why don't yeah. my homies that's hooping, why don't y'all come meet me on the yeah. golf course? Right. You know, and so I just think that the 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 importance is people that love this game need to talk about how they love this game. Yes. And they need to spend more time in this game and they need to. They have now the responsibility and the burden to bring this game to people in their communities that don't have access to it. My main man, uh, golf creator, he hates the word influencer, but he's leading the charge uh, and changing the landscape, bringing the culture to golf, Roger Steele. My man, Roger Steele. What's good, baby? Tell us who you are and how you got on point for it. Man, it's, uh, it's just crazy. First of all, let me ask y'all a question. Am I like one of the, the least famous people that y'all don't had on this show so far? Like, am I setting the floor for, for appearances? Right? Just be honest with me. Break I'm it to you. I don't know about Dre, but in my world, you up there. I'm up? You up there. That's but like with crazy. Dre, with Dre, I've been following know. him for a while. Okay, so I let's... remember when Dre, I remember when you first slid in. He slid in with the burner account. <laughs> you ain't supposed to say that. No, 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 no. no. I do have another account where I, I yeah. only rock with people I rock exactly. with from there. So exactly. I can talk and say whatever I want to say without, exactly. you know, get kicked out the league or whatever. You know how that go. Um, shots at them for finding me. But <laughs> like I'm saying, I know you don't like the word influencer. Yeah. And I agree with that. And so I wanted you to Give me your thoughts on what influencer is and why you don't like that word. I just feel like my job is not to sell nobody on nothing. Mm -hmm. My job is to exist as an individual, you know, represent myself and, and my upbringing authentically. And when I find brands that care about the same things I care about, we do business together. Right. When they make good products, we do business together because I genuinely rock with their product, I rock with them, their company culture, and they resonate with me and everything that's true to me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm not really trying to force nobody to buy nothing. I'm just telling y'all, these are the people that I spend time around. Yeah. And it's that's like a different mentality than saying like, I want you to go buy this thing because yeah. they, they cut me a little check and hit right. a discount code for you. But it's like, nah, this is like, everybody that I touch, our relationships are real, bro. Yeah. And so that's why I don't really resonate with, with that term, nor do I want to be known as that. I'm not selling anybody on anything. Like I'm just on social media telling stories about cool people that I meet yeah. and a cool sport that I play that allow me to come across people that normal black people wouldn't spend time with, yeah. you know? I'm wondering because uh, you look at golf and it's always, you know, technically a polished sport and a sport that uh, you have to keep your manners and everything like that. What gave you the confidence to be so authentic? Because you you got on with your, you know, patented eight minute video kind of yeah. school and dudes of what golf is and uh, the do's and don'ts of it. And, you know, usually sometimes that might be frowned upon, but you broken into a, a space and, you know, kicked down a door and made it yourself. But I, I think that COVID helped me a lot with that because I didn't have anything going for myself at that time, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was, you know, trying to be a black entrepreneur you know, I started a media company. I was trying to tell stories for different brands. Work. I always wanted to be in the sports space. So, yeah. you know, all my athletes, friends, I was trying to help them create content, storytelling around things that they were doing in their careers. But when COVID happened, it's like I lost everything. And the thing that kind of messed me up about that was that at that time in the golf landscape, I wasn't being myself to right. get these opportunities. I was kind of doing my little song and dance thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to make sure that, you know, people start like, oh, make sure he approachable, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, we had the low fade, we was, you know what I mean? <laughs> we was trying to, you know, get everything cleaned up, not really expressing yourself, telling your opinions. But, uh, but when COVID happened, it was like, everybody turned their back and I'm like, bro, all that pretending I did, I ain't got nothing to show for it. Right. And it was like, what's the point? You know what right. I mean? So when I when I make this first video, dog, I'm really thinking that like, all right, like, I don't know if y'all curse on here or not. Oh, no, we curse no, hey, all the time. Hey, hey. What, what's, the, what's the limitations? What's he the curses. limitations of curse? You, you can say whatever you want. I mean, I call the reigning champs franchise teams some lame ass niggas. 
So, yes, he did do that. So, that's, so, all I, that's all I need to do. <laughs> but no, no, but it was a big thing. Like, it's like, yo, I'm about to be the first dude in golf that say nigga while talking about golf. That was the first video. <laughs> nah, bro, that's, that's, I, that's what I, I, I want to hear. I dropped this eight minute video. I must have, I must have cursed like 80 times. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was not not to be ignorant. I didn't say anything distasteful. Right. I was just talking to the camera like I would talk to one of y'all if we were yeah. chopping it up. Yeah. But I felt like everybody that was black in golf never did that. Correct. They always they put that voice on. It was up, 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 up. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so it's like, man, it's like how, how many people are gonna step up and, and authentically represent who they are and not feel ashamed or scared of that. Mm -hmm. And so I was just betting big mm -hmm. that if I did this, certain people not gonna like me. That's what yeah. I thought. Like yeah. I'm gonna lose certain opportunities. I'm gonna lose certain invites to country clubs. This might cost me in some ways, but I was more interested in what I could gain yeah. from being myself and who would rock with me after that. Cause then I would know that they was really cool with me. But check me out. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna go back and I, I want to properly let folks in on who don't know you. Like yeah. I think my fans know me as a huge golfer. Right. And ET's gotten a golf. That's you know, he's looking really, solid. That's he got the bug. That's on my he got the bug. My profile. Yeah. You know, we talk about yeah. the bug, like when you hit, get hit with the bug. And so I want to properly give you your title. How what, how would you describe like who you are? Like, what's your title? I'm, bro, I just, I call myself a, a, a creator, bro. Like, like a, it. like a, I just like to, you know, create and tell stories. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to, when I came into the golf space, all I was trying to do was spotlight dope people that mm -hmm. look like us that play golf. Mm -hmm. That's my, that's how I got my whole start in this, you know, yeah. like ever since maybe like 2016. I'm like, man, where is dope black golf being played? How can I become a part of it? How can I story tell? What, what are the dope athletes, dope people that's involved in the game? How do I meet them? And so since I could remember, all I've been trying to do is create content around the black golf experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how like, that's, that's really all that I'm doing today, but all I'm doing now that's different is it's, it's more focused around my personal experiences yeah. versus right. other people that I've come across, yeah. you know? So, so by my fault, let's dive into your personal experiences because you're from Chicago, yeah. we're around the same age. Yeah. I, I knew I grew up hooping. Y'all met y'all met when you were like 14, we were like 15, yeah, 14. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't know till today. Yeah, no, nah, but I, mean, <laughs> I would have stayed closer to him if I knew he was gonna blow up like that, that's bro. That's what I'm <laughs> saying, man. I could have been I could have been <laughs> on the golf set. I appreciate the ride home. Yeah, I'm always grateful yeah, yeah. for a ride I home. Stayed closer. So like you good in my book. And shout out Ari Styles. But during around that time, like you said, you're picking me up from basketball practice and you probably were just coming from the golf course. Like, explain what that was like growing up, especially in Chicago where most of us are from the Jordan era. Yeah. And it's all hoop or nothing. Bro, I, I, like at that time, I was ashamed of golf though, bro. Like, I'm so when did you start? Like go back and give us like the yeah. beginning. Bro, but my, so my pops, uh, he a Chicago police officer. He's 33 years Chicago police officer. Okay. Okay. So like when, around the time I was born, he was falling in love with the game. And so I'm my only child. And so okay. when my dad want to spend time with me, he like, all right, these are two options. We could hoop in this backyard or you could come to the golf course with me. Those are your only two options. Right. If you're, you either with your mama or you playing bass, you we hooping in the backyard or you coming to the golf course with me. And he got the golf bug like crazy. So it's really just him dragging me to the golf course. Right. Yeah. And you know, like all the kids in my neighborhood hooping in the alleys and stuff like that. So like, because my dad was so militant with it, like my relationship with golf wasn't that strong as a kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I, I crave more basketball experiences. That's why me and Ari was so cool. Like yeah. I just, I just wanted to be around basketball. Golf was like something that I did because, you know, I, I looked up to my pops. I wanted him to be happy, stuff yeah. like that. But, but you know, what I didn't realize in that time is that, you know, he was really teaching me a language. Like right. that sport, this sport is a language. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's why every kid that I come across, it's like, bro, I'm not telling you to stop playing basketball. I'm not telling you to stop playing football, baseball, nothing. I'm right. just saying, add this to your repertoire yeah. and watch how this game like help you ascend way higher than all your peers. Right. You know, and so like for me, the golf experience during the Jordan era is like, you not like, don't nobody care about, I was like, I didn't even want people to know I play golf. I went to college, bro, and didn't even tell nobody I played golf. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So right. I quit for like six, seven years after high school, just because I was like, man, this me and this, we don't get along. You yeah. know, it was just like one of them chicks she was just buying time with, just like, all right, we're gonna do this until like, till we can't do it no more yeah. than we. We all to the, you all to the next day. Yeah, I hear that. But uh, <laughs> but it was like looking back on that. If I would have just internalized how beneficial mm -hmm. everything that my pops was 
exposing me to how it could have served me. Right. Like it's crazy the thing when my life could have been, dog. Yeah. Like the things that I in college that I deprived myself of because I was so I was running away from this sport, from this right. ecosystem. Right. Yeah. Like, bro, right. like I would have been cool with whoever there was to be cool with that was doing whatever there, you know what I mean? Yeah. I would have right. been in Palo Alto somewhere, dog. True story. You know, that's yeah. true story. Yeah, I've seen you at Stanford. You know what range. I mean? You it would have been yeah. way, it would have been way yeah. different. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I just think that, you know, for me growing up, like I I I grew up like a normal black kid where where basketball was all that I craved. Yeah. But I think that a lot of my affinity to the sport of basketball is what allows me to exist as I do today, because I don't look at the world like a golfer. You know, I look right. at it like, like somebody that love basketball yeah. first. Right. Like I love basketball culture. And then it's like, what parts of this culture can I bleed over into this sport? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I think has allowed me to kind of differentiate myself from other creators. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? That just love golf. You know, right. I don't see the world the same as they do. So it's yeah. it's it's been dope for me right. personally. That's dope. What, what's one thing that stands out that you think you've been able to implement from basketball to golf? Is it the trash talking yeah. or, or what? That's what it is. I think that mo <laughs> most most of it is just talking crazy. <laughs> talking yeah, like crazy. it's talking crazy, yeah. and it's like it's like talking crazy with a purpose for me. I like to gamble, you know, when I play. Yeah, and so like I talk crazy for a couple reasons. One is because like I want everybody around me to try their hardest, even if they like stumping my teeth in. Yeah. Like I still want to know what you got in the tank, yeah. right? Because then that let me know, like, all right, maybe I need to leave this dude alone, or maybe <laughs> I need to, you know, what I mean? you know, maybe oh, this dude he ain't as tough as he say he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but I think that you know. For me, expressing myself, keeping everything lighthearted and, 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 and being like bold about competition is something that yeah. I enjoy, especially yeah. playing basketball mm -hmm. like in Chicago. Like you you talking crazy just because, bro. Right. It's, it's getting yeah. ugly. I'm yeah. like, bro, we in high school, bro. What you take? Like, yeah, you know, to show up to the court like, yeah, I'm liking this. It's like, bro, you the, you the weakest dude here. Like, you know what I'm saying? But like, he getting on the court for five straight games. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, yeah. So I just, I, I always enjoy how we were not ashamed to be at yeah. odds with each other, like on the basketball yeah, court. Right. And I think that golf could benefit from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, like just, like, yo, I, I want to beat you, dog. And right. I want you to know that I want to beat you. You know, but also I think that it gave me like this, this aggressiveness and kind of like this uh, this willingness to be more reactive versus so in my head. Mm -hmm. I think that something like traditional golfers struggle with is that they so like cerebral with everything. Right. And they don't approach it like, like just be an athlete, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like don't be so technical yeah, about yeah, your yeah, swing. Don't yeah, be so yeah. technical about this. Like, and the personality you, becomes technical too. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and the game of sport is the beautiful thing about athletes for fluid. Yeah, and it's natural. It's gifted. It's yeah. like the fluidity. Sometimes, yeah. like it's either you're an athlete or not. Some people can be an athlete, but like how you walk, how easy something is. It's like that's the beauty of, of being a, a, an athlete. Right, right. And that's what I find too. It's like it's it's a lot of it's a lot of crossover. No pun intended. As far <laughs> as like how I think basketball players could really benefit from the game of golf, and that's something that I actually wanted to ask you. You know, Andre, you you spend so much time with it, dog. Like. Where his golf really served you? Because, I mean, you had a long career. Right. And I can't help but imagine that, like, some of the things you've either internalized mentally or, like, some of the benefits maybe your body has gone through from just being mm -hmm. more mobile or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how do golf serve you as a as an athlete, as a, as a, pro a professional basketball player? I mean, how much time do we have? You know, hmm. because it's just really, as, an, as a professional athlete, you know how hard it is to make it in your sport. Yeah. So anything else that I do, I'm putting the same effort in it. Mm -hmm. And then when you find something you like or a pa another passion, you putting the same energy. And so yeah. with golf, I realized like you gotta get reps. Like people don't understand how many shots we shoot as basketball players. Mm -hmm. I remember one summer, I, I had 500 makes a day, five days a week. Bro, that's, I remember, and it's no flex. I had text Kobe like, yo, I'm I'm making 500 going into my rookie year. He's like, when I was that age, I made a thousand. Yeah. Like a thousand. Yeah. So like, you know what I'm saying? So like that people level. people think, you know, they was like, I can shoot threes with you. And then they come in at, you know, the timeout and they shooting free throws and threes and they struggling. They be like, yo, this three point line is far. Yeah. But we make it look like yeah. it's a regular 15 foot jump shot. And this is what we do all day, every Rip day. Out. And so when I got into golf, I always liked golf. All, I grew up watching Tiger, of course. Just didn't know, didn't have access, didn't know where to go. We just don't know. We don't have access to it. But I had a coach, Pete Myers. He taught me how to hit a draw, and it's That's that, crazy. and it's that feeling. <laughs> You're like, oh. And we have this joke: is you know, as as you get older as a man, yeah. And you know, they say 
hitting a perfect golf shot is is a similar. It's like similar to an orgasm, yeah. right? <laughs> Real talk, like I ain't gonna go that uh, far. Yeah, I wouldn't dog. go that far. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I ain't gonna go I'll that far, big dog. Shit, yeah. but, <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> no, but it, it, bro, it's very few feelings. It's very, very few feelings bro. when you hit the perfect golf shot. Bro. You know where it's going. Like, you, you, you know the course. Yeah. You know exactly what you're trying yeah. to avoid. You got trouble yeah. left, so you're hitting a draw. And worst case scenario, you hook it left rough, and, yeah. and you know, or you you in the right rough, and you playing like that. Or some people might cut it off trouble on the left side. You know, right. so it's just a mental stimulation from it. And the, the, my favorite part was I'm competing against myself. Yep. You know, I can't get mad at somebody else. It's not the coach's fault. Ain't no referees. Yep. Another reason why I got fined 25000 And so, <laughs> you know, it's really just, it's really you getting to know yourself better. And I keep telling him, wait till you get on that course. You're yeah. going to find out something different about yourself. And this is my, this is my final point on that question. I've learned that I can figure out who a person is in one round of golf. People always ask me, like, how do you get to know somebody? I said, give me one round of golf. I'll know if they're a good person or a bad person because yeah. I know if they're motivated. Yep. I know if they're mentally strong. I see them at their best. And they worse. And they worse. In a matter of seconds. In the same hole. Yep. In a matter of minutes. You in see, a matter of minutes. Man. And if they're a lying son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> bro, <laughs> cheating, bro. Like, what, you just, cheating, J.R. Bro? Smith. Hey. J.R. Smith loved telling me he was a 10 handicap. <laughs> Taking everybody money, <laughs> bro. Jr. got game, dog. I know. He shocked I, I me a little bit. Out. He shocked me. He shocked me when I when we got to tee it up. But I think that like that that emotional intelligence component of the game, bro, is right. like crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Like the way that it allows you to to break down people, scenarios, mm -hmm. who you gonna do business with, who you who you never want to see again. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's like you know how how does this person handle adversity? How does this person value my time? Like you know, yeah. it's a big thing to me. I get on the golf course with somebody, and they like on calls, on the phone, all this. Like damn, so you really didn't prioritize like spending time with me. It was like I was just something that you kind of fit in. Like all right, right like right. that's cool. True. But it's just the things that you get to dissect in yeah. that matter of yeah. time. Yeah. It's like it's it's wild, bro. Yeah, it's no. wild. It's a cheat code, dog. It, it definitely oh, is. Bro. And and it's funny because you can actually see the world. If you, if you get good at golf, like Steph always told me, my goal was to get down to a seven. Yep. When I first started playing with Steph, he was so much better than me. I, and I'm like a 19, 20. I said, if I ever get to a seven, my life is set. He said, you get to a seven, you can play anywhere in the world. Yep. Meaning you got a reason to travel. You got a reason to see the world. I look at golf courses different now. When I used to play, all I saw was a course because I'm yep. now I'm looking at the scenery, topography. Who built a course? You know, I learned that Alistair McKenzie is my favorite designer. Right. Because all the I've named five courses of my favorite courses. Somebody was like, they're all designed by the same person. Yep. Now I'm going to read design books. Now my goal is to have my own golf course. Right. Now I got to get to work because it costs a lot. But in saying all that, we're talking about business. And you've built this great, you know, uh, golf creator platform for yourself. You're working with, you know, Trap golf yeah. was, you know, that's how I really saw you. And I'm like, trap golf is dope. It's a black golf brand. Right. You know what I mean? Now I'm seeing you. Initially, you were with Adidas. Yeah. Now you're with Nike doing stuff for them. Right. Then I see you with Callaway. When I start seeing you on Sundays <laughs> on Golf Channel or NBC, I don't think you understand, like, how proud I am to that's see a black man with braids who talk that talk in front of golf is probably the 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 more uh high-end sponsorship group exactly you know we do basketball and we have a lot of revenue with our sponsorships but you got kpmg workday qualtrick you got these SaaS companies yeah. you know software companies yep. that you know printing money salesforce is one of the largest companies in the world they're directly in all the top golf uh partnerships you know uh, pfizer has a tournament like all these things and you're right in the middle of it so just kind of walk me through how that process has been and where do you want to take this thing well, I think that like, <clears throat> like the thing that golf exposed me to early when I came back to it as an adult is that this is where business is done, dog. Like our culture is yeah. is that you know what I mean? So it's just like I was exposed to the world of entrepreneurship, and I knew that man, you know, the the life that they live in is something that I want for myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I I went into the game of golf like already understanding that, you know, more so than trying to play at the highest level, this game is going to expose me to unique business opportunities that I'm otherwise not going to be privy to. Yeah. And I want to be educated enough to take advantage of these opportunities as they present themselves. And so I think that, you know, spending a lot of time around accomplished entrepreneurs on the golf course, it really gave me a level of acumen where I was able to talk to somebody that was a decision maker at a company and be like, 
well, tell me how I could add value to whatever y'all have going on. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm never going into these relationships with a Nike or a Callaway, like, I'm Roger Steele, like, rock with me, da, 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 da. It's like, yo, like, all right, what products y'all got coming out this year? Like, where are the cool storylines where I feel like my brand and the things I care about and, and, and y'all storylines could coexist, like, you know, uh, organically. You know what I mean? Like, same thing with Nike Golf. What, what shoes are dropping this year? Like, right. what's the dope storylines that I could tell around things that I'm comfortable with and familiar with? Like, who are the athletes that you think would be like, I'm approaching this very yeah. methodically. Like, I'm not yeah. taking none of this stuff for granted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like, I don't, and you know, to, to, to further that, like, I don't look at this whole thing as like an influencer situation or something that's gonna be a fad. Like, the people that I work with today, I wanna do business with them for the rest of my life, dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I'm a, right. so, so I'm yeah. going to yeah. learn the things that I need to know about these brands and these businesses so that when they're making decisions in 10 years, they'd be like, Roger, like, I, I want you to come in and help us yeah. like navigate this because I know you spent time here. You know what I mean? And so I think that like for me, my goal is to just continue to be a value add because that's what's gotten me. Right. Here. Whether that's being a value add to individuals, whether that's being a value add to brands. Like my first question when I meet somebody is like, how can I help? I learned about projects that y'all working on. It's like, all right, like, man, I want to know about it just yeah. to right. know if it's any synergies between things yeah. that I may have come across or, or people that I may have come across. Like, is there an introduction that I have? Yeah, mm -hmm. because they, they say when you learn, that's where innovation comes from. You know what I mean? And that's where you're able to yep. spark and keep going and keep adding more to your brand and becoming a tastemaker. Yeah, and you got and you got to be like very thoughtful, man. It's like every every time that I sit down with with anybody, I'm super present. Yeah. And I'm 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 taking these conversations like I'm I'm listening so intently because I really want to understand where there is opportunity where our paths can continue to intersect, mm -hmm. especially if you were a good person, mm -hmm. you know? And so when I meet good people, it's just like, man, just don't, I'm not really looking at like 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it's like, I got this group of people that I talk to on a pretty frequent basis yeah. and they all good people. And I wanna make sure that I'm adding value to every single thing that they, that I can, that they have going on. For sure. And that's, and I feel like if I just keep doing that over and over and over again, like my life is gonna be cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's, so that's, as far as like a, a, a overarching strategy, it's not, I'm not trying to be like that dude or like, I'm not trying to be the face of black golf or nothing like that. Right. You know, it's, I, right. I don't I don't want any of the accolades. Like I, I would just like, I know really good people. Yeah. I know really good brands and they doing really good things and I'm gonna do everything in my power to help them tell their story. And if I'm a part of that, then cool. And if they need somebody else that will be a better storyteller in that regard, I'm gonna help them find them and I'm gonna put gas behind that, you know? That's real. That's real. So to follow up with that, we have a, a topic on our show called gu Guns and Butter. Yeah. Most people think of it as a macroeconomic principle, but it's basically from the movie Baby, Baby Boy. Baby Boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Got guns right. and butter. Guns and butter, yeah, little yeah. stupid motherfucker. So, <laughs> so when you look back on it, were, were there any micro decisions that you had made? You know, obviously besides going to the, the golf range with your dad frequently that, you know, pay huge dividends in the end where you're at right now? Yeah, bro. Cursing and content, dog. <laughs> like bro, like being yeah. like not being afraid to curse on yeah. like TV or whatever the especially case you call it, especially with golf. <laughs> like that was a dice roll for real. That could have went. Somebody get tapped. JT, sir, come here. <laughs> sir, come here. JT, Justin Thomas had a situation Ooh. where he lost millions. Uh, it's certain words you can't say though, bro. Oh, uh, but I think, but bro, cursing, but like being being willing to you know making a stance to say I'm gonna authentically represent myself like publicly. Yeah, that was yeah. like a big one. And I, I didn't I understood the gravity of the situation, but the stakes weren't that high at the time. Yeah. But I was looking at it like, bro, that really could have put you behind the eight ball. Like that could have went terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. Wrong person see it on the wrong day under the wrong yeah. circumstances. Yeah. Or even if I had did that stuff like pre-George Floyd. Right, right, right. Like right. Where, where where people weren't really looking for, you know what I mean? They yeah. weren't looking. Now people kind of looking for ways to, you know, incorporate, be be more, di you know, diverse yeah. and be more inclusive and stuff like that. But right. before That's all the point. stuff started going crazy, Great if you would have kind of stepped out your lane a little bit, it's like, oh, bro, you will never do anything in this yeah. sport. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that leads me to my next question then, because, you know, you're doing not, it. I'm not wait, I'm not telling kids to curse though. Like, no, I'm not no, saying no. that's I'm oh, not gonna no. say that's your, your, no, your no, break. Yeah, 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 yeah. These, 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 <laughs> the, uh, this, this, the content from their songs are crazy. It's, it's wild. Yeah, it's bro. crazy. You know, they got the uh drill, the drill rapper from uh, New York is like 13, bro. But it, it it leads me to my next question in terms of with success, 
breeds uh, the ills of it. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of ills that come with success. There's yeah. a lot of trauma coming from playing with the NBA. Yeah. And people don't realize that. You know, they say take care of your mentals and your chicken. And, it's, and I believe it's take care of your mentals because yeah. if your mentals aren't right, you're going to spend all your chicken trying to get your mentals right. And there's there's right. no amount of money that can turn your brain back into, you know, uh, like you were talking about how you become a model citizen or yeah. how can you be productive to society? Because when your brain's gone, that's it. They said you kill the body by cutting off the head. 100%. And so with all the success you've had, you know, we've talked about it, you know, how, uh, you know, you had people who have approached you disrespectfully and how you've chosen how to respond to it. Yep. And then how you look back and say, I would have did different. But just talk about, you know, how success has changed. Uh, ha you've had to change because of the success, because of the bad things that came with it. The, the if, if, if that has had an effect, I think that like it's still happening in like a very slow way. Um, I think that what I, what I realized, bro, is that the golf space, is um, the things that's bad about golf, bro, is that like how exclusive it is, right? And my whole thing is like, I want everybody to have access to this sport. Yeah. The thing that bothered me is that, like even in the black community, that exclusivity still exists. Yes. To where people think that like, I'm not good enough to represent black golf in certain ways. Because like, I didn't do all of the, like I didn't play college golf or I didn't get no, PGA certification or I didn't, you know, yeah. dedicate every waking moment to the pursuit of this game. Mm -hmm. I love this game deeply, but I think that what hurt me the most is that for all of the, the success that I thought we were having together, right. I'm yeah. like, bro, if I'm if I'm getting this deal and if if, if other people getting Jordan brand deals, if every, like, bro, we coming up, dog, yeah, what you talking real. about? Yeah, like, that real. mean the door is yeah. about to open for all of us. Yeah. Like, everybody find their lane yeah. and let's get, let's everybody get to it. But to be met with, with the energy that you know, like I'm not, people made me feel like I'm not good enough for the stuff that I'm doing, mm -hmm. which was kind of crazy. Cause I, I definitely had like, you know, very high hopes and a lot of optimism and a lot of trust. Really. Right. Yeah. Like, oh right. man, we in golf, this is a gentleman sport. Right. I meet somebody in a golf course, you different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Like I, I was extending that type of love to people and to find out that, you know, be it behind closed doors or be it through, you know, the means that somehow find it into your phone. Like people don't love you like that. Right. You know, they don't like you, 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 you doing things that you think everybody benefiting from, but they don't, they don't love you the same way. So I think that in certain ways that has made me focus on quality of relationships. Yeah. And it's not like this wide blanket that I try to throw over yeah. like you a black golfer, like ah, you could probably still be a scumbag though. Yeah. Like low key, like low key, you could you could still be weird a little bit. Most you know great I mean? golfers are douchebags. I would say that about a lot of great athletes, bro. Like if you a dog in your sport, you probably like don't care about a lot of other stuff no, outside of like, you and your pursuit the, of that sport. Like, I, I, a lot of elite golfers are like we talk about. They're mad technical. Yeah, they don't have that social IQ because they're by themselves a lot. Yeah, that's true too. You it know is, what I mean? It's like as as far as it being an uh, individual, like a solely on you and your caddy, that relationship is driving a lot of your human interaction throughout the course of the day. And you spend so much time ignoring people. Like you literally yeah, yeah. walking side by side in silence with nothing but people. Right. And you tune yourself, you tune uh, people out for a living yeah. pretty much. That, that's kind of that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So I, I agree with that sentiment. So how do we, how do we grow the game for our community, African-Americans to play more golf? I see you out there with kids all the time with your pops. He has his golf camp every yep. year. So how do we grow that community to where we get more black kids to play golf? Man, thank I know you. Steph's doing a great. Steph is killing it, bro. Killing I need. It. Have you been to one of his events? Uh, yeah, to the to the underrated. Man, it's event. amazing. They did right? one in Chicago, bro. It's like, bro, if you could see these kids' faces, but not just the kids' faces, bro. They parents, dog. Yeah, like parents. Like you start asking them, like I'm just over there flying on the wall. Like, how how's this experience been for you? Like one one parent started crying, like bro, I got seven kids and I want all of them to play golf. And this man Steph done flew all of them yeah, all across crazy. the country wow. so that they could compete. It's crazy. Like I ain't came out of pocket for nothing. Like, do you understand what this means for yeah. me and my fam? I'm like, bro, what? I'm about to start crying. Bros cry up. You know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah. like oh, emotional Saturday, dog. And so for you people that mean? don't know, Steph has an underrated golf tour. Yeah. And think about it like this. Think of it when we were young, up and coming, fifth, sixth graders, they had a uh 
uh, a NBA tour for kids in our age group where you travel to like seven different cities and you play in NBA arenas. You got NBA refs, you got NBA yeah. jerseys, Bro. you got the shoes yeah. already for you. Your name is in the rafters, like on the, you know, we got the signage yeah, yeah, yeah. on Bro. buses. Wow. They got all that for these kids, bro. It's and they handpick. It's incredible. Wow. That's amazing. It's, it's nuts, That's amazing. bro. It's nuts. And so when you when you having this conversation, and like, you know, part of the reason that I'm so proud and honored to even like be sitting next to y'all having this conversation with y'all is y'all basketball culture is like low-key driving golf forward, dog. Sneakers. Like, bro, it's like it's crazy, but it's just like I think that the as far as the relatability of the figures in the sport. Yeah. How they're able to articulate and express themselves more, you know, liberally than 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 I feel other sports have the opportunity to. Yeah, like kind of some of the freedoms that that I feel basketball enjoys, and just the swagger which with with which they approach life. Like basketball culture, I feel is so important to the health of golf and the growth of golf, and that's why like seeing you pick up a golf club, bro. Uh -huh. Is wild, dog. He, he decent, ain't he? It, the swing's solid. I ain't like. Don't get me wrong. I, I will be taking it. your money for the next like decade, though, <laughs> yeah, dog. Like easy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If I don't know. If, close, if, I'm, I'm if, close, if, if there's time, if there's time, if there's time, time. I'm, I'm going to an eighty probably, eighty five, ninety. So but bro, worry. like like y'all picking up a, a golf club and advocating for this sport, bro, and mm -hmm. being present in these spaces and making people follow you from this space to that space, this space to that space, like that's was helping the game. Because now a kid like me, like when I was younger, if if it was just more publicized, like how heavy Jordan was in the game, right. if it was if it was just more talked about, if there were more accommodations being made to yeah. make golf feel more like that, I would have been proud. Like I would have right. been like, yo, MJ golfing and hooping, dog. Like why don't, why don't yeah. my homies that's hooping, why don't y'all come meet me on the yeah. golf course? Right. You know, and so I just think that the, the, the importance is People that love this game need to talk about how they love this game. Yes. And they need to spend more time in this game. And they need to, they have now the responsibility and the burden to bring this game to people in their communities that don't have access to it. Like that's your burden. Now that I love golf yeah, yeah. and now that I, you know, am, am being able to see the world, I owe it to the kids in my neighborhood to like, you gotta learn this game. And oh, I'm gonna oh, oh. spare no expense making sure that you get access to it. I, yeah. I always say, once you've mastered something, it's your duty to teach it, yep. same thing. But I almost forgot this. When you were younger, you had a lesson. Yeah. From the greatest golfer of all time. Bro. Wow. Yeah. We found a picture. <laughs> That's crazy. So walk us through that experience. How did it happen? And just every, how did it well, change bro, you? First of all, I'm like five years old at the time. So I'm not even like processing this the right way. I wasn't. He was 17? 17. He was young. Yeah. So bro, this is, you know, this is all Earl. Earl was driving a boat at this. You know, he he driving the ship, the, the Tiger Woods ship. So yeah. he got Tiger in the hood. Like, <laughs> I mean, he got Tiger like on Jackson Park on the South Side, bro. That's like a, man, I, I played in a <laughs> golf tournament at Jackson Park, bro. Like you, you, I'm playing in a real tournament uh -huh. at Jackson Park. Crackhead, come on the golf course. Steal all our golf balls out the fairway, go outside the fence, try to sell them back to us, bro. Like it's crazy, <laughs> dog. That's a story. Hey, bro, I'm walking down the fence. No, I'm like, I'm like, bro, I know my resourceful. Bro, I'm like, I know my ball over here. But like, just to frame up, like what Jack, like how it is over by Jackson Park, like, bro, they it's wild over there. You, bro. No, no, hold on. I got one story. One of my favorite books is Snowball Effect. It's, okay. about, it's a biography on uh, Warren Buffett. One of his first gigs, him and his friends would go by the golf course go in the pond where the balls got hit and they would dig out balls from the pond and bro, then right. resell them to people. Right. What's the difference between them and the crackhead? But he stole, bro. <laughs> real talk. Good point. Speaking of real talk. It's you called Warren, you can <laughs> compare Warren Buffett to a crackhead. That's that what I'm saying. The first it's just the optics of everything. Warren yeah. Buffett got crackhead crack tennis. Cause they borrow stuff from us, but <laughs> yeah. we steal it. it yeah. It's just, it, the same thing happens. <laughs> bro, bro, he trespassed. First of all, he trespassed. He used his I athleticism. Mean, he did. He did, he <laughs> he did, did he jump he a fence. The fence. He jumped the fence. He just landed. Yeah, forty yard dash. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't, and, don't, and, don't. And it was my, it was my fault. My ball was a little too close to the fence. I could have been on the left side of the fairway <laughs> or something like that. You know, it's, it's where, where's my accountability and all that. But, but Earl got Tiger in the hood, dog. That's and crazy. you know, he got a, you know, it's a bunch of kids there that day. Uh, you know, and, and and Tiger calling us up one by one to hit golf shots and stuff. And my dad got me front row on some little, you know, head ass stuff. Like, get up there, you know what I mean? Get your ass up there. And so, uh, and so I get up there. And first of all, the, the picture's so crazy because my pops got me dressed bogus, dog. That's the only thing that I you resent. You might have been flying for back then. Nah, bro. Nah. 
nah, nah, nah. <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, I get up there, bro, and I just I pipe one, dog. Mm. Like I pipe one. I remember, you know, walking out, and Tiger looked at it, and the reporter, like, what's your name, kid? Da, 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 da. And so uh, and then next next day they put me and Tiger in the newspaper talking about working on his fan game. But I feel like, and the only thing that I was really able to take away from that is that. When it's big time moments, I'm gonna step up. You know what I mean? Even mm -hmm. if I'm not aware of what's going on. That's right. the confidence that I, yeah. like, even as a shorty, bro, you've been showing up. I like that about you. You know, that's how I had to look at myself that's in the mirror. Time, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's when real, I, bro. That's real. That. But the other it part is. of that is like, man, I've been I've been working so hard to make sure me and Tiger Pass cross again, dog. That's that's gonna be, I'm I'm excited about, about that one. And just for all of this to come full circle, bro, like, big time. you is. know, sitting here with y'all is like just, it's all steps <laughs> to get to, to, mm -hmm. to moments like that. It's like, man, I'm getting acknowledgement from different places in the game. And I know one day we're going to cross paths and get to chop it up about like his experiences, hopefully, you know, get enough trust. So he tell me some of them real stories about what it was like to be black and doing the things that he was doing in the right. game. But yeah, that's, that's, that's really what I'm looking forward to, 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 retake that picture again in the future, dog. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so if you had to choose one person that, you know, you, you give, uh, you know, most of your credit to for where you're at now, who who would it be? Or who do you think you wouldn't be here without, to say the least? I, I got to give it to, I mean, I, I got to look at my parents as a unit, bro. Mm. Because like, you know, my pops, you know, he was a police officer, but he wasn't like, you know, he was a street dude that had a badge, you know, and so like, <laughs> He was giving me a lot of game, but my mom was taking the things that he was telling me and then giving me perspective on like how to apply that. Yeah, and yeah. so it was really like with with one or the other, I wouldn't have been able to understand it, you know? Yeah. But I think that my pops, you know, he taught me a lot of things harshly. And, uh, and he, you know, taught me how to just navigate a lot of circumstances, different types of people, how to, you know, resolve conflict in his way. Yeah. But then my mom, you know, she took that message. Right. She never, she <laughs> never argued with him and said he was wrong, yeah. but she filtered it into something that like a young man could understand yeah. that wouldn't leave me in a situation where we're like, we getting in fist fights all the time. You know yeah, what I mean? That's or, like, that's real. You know, cause I, I just, I think if I had one or the other, like my mom probably would have made me a little too passive yeah. and my dad would have made me a little too, too aggressive, too but I needed both of them to to really take their time and, and and spend a lot of alone time with each of them yeah. so that I could process a lot of my dynamics the way that I do. So that's real. I know that's, that's cliche true. to get your no, parents it's the true. credit. No, 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 that's I, true. I always say like, my mom raised me off Bible scriptures and my dad raised me off pimp magic Don Juan quote. Ain't that crazy? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What's so, up with like Chicago you, pop parents? <laughs> Bro, it's like, <laughs> wait, who the <laughs> No, and then he told hey. me what my nickname, my, my real name was supposed to be. What? All right, we're gonna have to camp. My dad wanted to name me Ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> Word the mother. <laughs> Word the mother. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Yo, you know how crazy it is, bro. Bro. Word the mother. Ecstasy. Ecstasy. Turner. He told Dre. He told this man, to Dre face to face, bro. Dead serious, bro. He looked you dead in your face and said, "My son' name was gonna be." He's still convinced that's Molly. what it should be. <laughs> <laughs> man, it was so. Crazy. Long story short, the, the, the balance. Hey, you is think important. your daddy was really a pimp like that, though? He just glorified that culture. That's that's what's interesting. No, no, his nickname was Huggy Bear. So like, so I'm saying, so like, I'm, let me what keep that, this. What do that mean? So like, from from uh. Huggy Bear from like the Mac, like, you okay, know what I mean? okay, okay. So like that type situation, but he wasn't no pimp. No, like he not, he wasn't there. He wasn't out there like, like that. that. But you know what I mean. But you know what's crazy is that like 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 black dudes in Chicago, I guess during the seventies or something uh -huh. like that. Yeah, I feel like they right on Madison and Pulaski. Madison and Pulaski, and bro. I grew up on Sir Mac and Pulaski. Yep. Yeah, see. Yeah. Like they glorify pimp culture, like <laughs> a lot of young dudes glorify gang culture. It's just right. like you know what I mean. Like everybody thought, everybody think they're a thug now. Everybody thought they're a pimp. I'm like, I had to call my daddy on there. Like you wasn't, you wasn't like that, was you? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was just talking to me like that, was you? Like you know, nah, nah. He be, he be spitting game. 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 Yeah, yeah. But, but the more, but more, black men are just in. Around each other, yeah, it'll benefit the next wave. And that's that's what it is. The system has not allowed that to happen because they know how scary it is when yeah. we come together. Now I'm going to Michael X mode, and they gonna ban me. But this, but this, but the but the reality of it is, like, I look, y'all are heroes, bro. Like y'all are, like y'all are our ver athletes, are heroes. And as as far as I'm concerned, you know, there's no other 
more legally glorified profession in the black community than to be a professional athlete. And so the thing that's that's always trippy to me about what y'all do is y'all reach the apex of like what we think life could be. But then I just always wonder how do y'all internalize what y'all responsibilities are when y'all reach that mountaintop? Like, because mm -hmm. the reality of it is point a million zero right. one percent yeah. of us yeah. is ever going to yeah. be able to see things from that lens or like experience things like that do y'all ever feel like man i really need to do more to kick open doors for people that are looking up to me because it's crazy they look up to me and they will spend a majority of their childhood trying to be y'all right but they not gonna get there and then where do they land right yeah. that's kind of the crazy part of like when they shoot for the moon and they miss, where do they land? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, no, it's real, but I always, tell, and I've been saying this recently, I, I always tell people, like, you might as well think delusional, think, think you can go anywhere. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's already set up for you not to go there. Yeah, right. So I say, like, shoot for the stars, and very worse, you become a teacher or a coach. Right. You understand what I'm right. saying? But, like, at least you went out trying. But, like, the whole thing of telling kids, are like, no, nah, go to college. College is important. And do all that, but just don't shoot a kid's dream down. You don't know what he got in them. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think, I don't know what Dre, Dre comes back and, you know, helps tons of people every single time. But I, I just think, uh, like you said, it's what your parents teach you. And um, when you get to that peak, what you're going to do with it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So some of us surround ourselves around the right people and we, we try to do right and, you know, give back. And I think a lot of guys in the NBA do so. But, you know, the one thing uh, that I think that, you know, Dre will tell you is um, the luxury of keeping that passion as you very well no, because um, when you go from having to play a sport in our neighborhood, that's kind of like a survivorship where you're sitting there. It's either you got to, you know, sling crack rock or got a wicked jump shot. Yeah. You're going to do whatever you can to make it out of it. And then when little shit just as simple as like your lights being turned on, you got to look over your back. Like there's money in your account, everything like that. Like you watch the Roberto Duran story. It's a point where he's like, bro, I'm just done fighting. I want to expand and, you know try to do more and be happy in a sense and build off what I have. And um, sometimes I, I think in a competitive nature, you never lose who you are, but it's okay to go a different turn and, you know, find happiness and what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, everything I'm going to say is basically a, a summary of what he said, but I think it's finding your passion too. Yeah. You know, not falling into that societal trap of you have to do things a certain way. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you got to have options. Why well, have options? And then I was, I'm still doing homework on um, uh, Andrew Carnegie and how he was the, he set up the foundation of the education system, you know, like going to school and to derive from his thought, we have too many free thinkers and not enough, not enough workers. So mm. school is basically uh, mental uh, manipulation to get you to be a work, to work for somebody and not Indeed. to think for yourself and to be in, cause, when you're doing a passion, when you have a passion, it's really you just being free and you being who you truly are and like your existence on earth yeah. and what you truly meant, like your purpose. Yeah. And when you get away from that, you'll never find happiness. I don't care how much money you make. As long as you're doing your passion, you're gonna be happy. Right. Like you can, there's some people who live, you know, in a, in a small house, but they're perfectly fine and happy and mentally stable. Yeah. And like, they don't care, like money doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Right. And so when you can find love in something where money isn't the objective, that's when you find your thing. And now there's no excuse to why you can't master that. Right. Because nobody can learn more about it than you. Nobody can practice it more than you. Like we all got the same amount of time in a day. Now there is balance, but you just really just got to use your brain and just tap into it. And but the problem the part of our issues in our community, we talk about Chicago, you know, they shutting down a lot of public schools. You right. know, we don't have funding, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, inflation. Uh, what's going on with, uh, you know, I, I track the CPI, you know, the cus consumer price index in terms of, uh, you know, eggs are up like 56%. You right. know what I mean? It's eggs, lettuce, lettuce is up yeah. crazy, yeah. right? And it's like, we can't even get basic food to provide ourselves for it, you know? And, and, and that's all systematic. And now I'm going deep in the barrels, but- But these are all conversations that we would have had if we was playing golf. True story. <laughs> that's why it's important yeah. that yeah. we make time to play golf. True story and be around each other in these spaces, we can have real dialogue, bro. Well, big business is done. Yep. We haven't tapped on that, but biz, big business is done on that golf course. I big, mean, bro. You see large corporations, you know, they're doing their, uh, you know, they're doing their retreats around golf courses. 
And that's why I need you to, you know, just keep tapping me on my shoulder, pull right. me into some of them circles, right. baby. We're you know, we, we working. I'm on here openly soliciting opportunities, dog. You know what <laughs> I mean? We're hey, working bro, it. You know, the hustle don't stop, dog. Don't you know, stop. so next time you get a little phone call, you need an extra man. You know where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. At least you yeah. ask for opportunity and not alone. <laughs> That's a big difference. That's a big difference. <laughs> I learned that one quick, bro. I, I oh, learned. You'll learn that quick with Dre, too. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I can't fuck with Buddy. <laughs> and I hope this doesn't sound bad, but it's the truth. The joy I feel when I start beating the white golfers, oh my God, mic drop. That's crazy. Cause, they, cause why, we can, I can never beat them now. They, they be like, damn, you're good. I get that all the time now. Yeah. Like, damn, you really can play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really God. play for a darkie. <laughs> 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 they, the they, like, they be like, damn, you can play, huh? Yeah, but that, that's why I encourage people when they pick up the game, bro. Like, get good at it. Like, just like treat it, treat it like something that you re don't just treat it like something you enjoy. Because that's what I see a lot of people falling into the trap of. Like, oh, I'm gonna just do this for fun. Like, no, nah, get good at it, bro. Because yeah, when you don't really unlock what the game could do for you until you start whooping people, dog. Yes. Hey, you you start stepping on somebody, bro. They you you the topic of dinner conversation now. Then it's like I can't get this dude off my head, man. I gotta have him back out at the club. I gotta I gotta get him back. I'm, I'm gonna make him play against Johnny one time. I, I bet Johnny could take him. They start matching up. They start. They start. They start. They start, they start like, I got somebody for you. I got somebody for you. Yeah, yeah we're gonna do this all whole thing again. Get on my jet, doing this whole thing again. Come on, I'm like, all right, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back, dog. But, but all, all I'm saying is one of the best compliments I got today is is my boy. He when I walked up, you was like, oh, you taller than I thought. No, that's real. a compliment. I, I didn't know, bro. You like six two, six three. I ain't know. No, that's that's a you not extreme exaggeration. You give me NBA heights now. Oh, that's damn, what y'all. Oh, that's what y'all be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I be tacking them extra inches on there. <laughs> I've unlocked why Roger hits the ball so far. What up? What is it? His thigh glute to body ratio is astronomical. Andre, yeah. look, Dre, and looking at that the ass. Ball. Far pause. What you mean? I, I am a, a I'm a stu I'm a, a student of athletes. Yeah. I got you right, and yeah. so I scout players. And so you built like her. And I'll say, <laughs> okay, <laughs> buddy got buddy got raptor arms. Okay, do it because because your your wingspan you. can determine where you get drafted in the league. It's crazy, 100%, 100%. right? And so then I'm looking at, I don't like his uh, physique. Like he don't have uh, tone in his arms. Yeah, that means he's 19 and he's muscular, but not really tone. His his life is his shelf life shorter. That's deep. Because if yeah. if he not on his regimen all day every day, he done. Now I'm looking at his parents. Okay, mom like this, dad like this. Yeah. Ah, he might have he might have tapped out. So I'm. I, that's how deep I go with evaluating players. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. But you know the beautiful thing about golf is none of that matters. You know what I mean? So if you don't want to get scrutinized by my man right here, just pick up a golf club, baby. <laughs> hey, anybody can find success. <laughs> anybody can find success here. <laughs> Disagree, disagree. Yeah, we gonna wrap it up in a minute. Disagree because the prototypical golf in terms of distance, touch, feel, all that is like six two, six three. That's yeah. That you are seeing a lot of taller players come through, and you see like Fitzpatrick and them. They got to go through the ringer to hit the ball five Bro, more they yards. Are, they getting on six month regiments. Yeah, to get in. like I gotta keep up. Yeah, so. Man, I appreciate you, bro. bro I appreciate this is, this, is, too. this is one of our favorite interviews. It's yeah. a dope interview. Um, you know, like we said, thank you for you know allowing us to be a part of the journey when you yep. climb up and just keep killing shit, bro. Appreciate you for, for sure. real. I thank appreciate y'all big time, big time. time.